On this segment, we will take on the topic leadership and young Africans. Is there a new template? My name is Chizobama Febu, your host on Culture Conversations. A lot has changed around the concept of leadership in Africa as a whole in regards to its ethos and execu execution. And in a large sense, we have the younger demographic, the Gen Z, Ys, and As to thank for this. The question today is, is there a new template for leadership? And how is the young populace bringing this newness about? To do this topic justice, we have founder, Africa Teen City, and convener, TEDx Lagos, Mercy Akamo with us. On cultural conversations, we have meaningful conversations with Africans whose personalities and projects are doing fantastic work in the campaign to reshape the local and global view of the African and the African culture. It will be an exciting couple of minutes, that I promise you. So we will meet with Mercy now. Mercy is the founder of African Teen City, the home to Africa's next gen leaders. She is a communication communications executive with over a decade of experience in the media and experiential industry. She recently was the chief communications officer at Mara, and she's also the co-founder and chief marketing officer at Adiba, a fintech that builds digital banks for organizations. She is a TEDx ambassador in Africa and the convener of TEDx Lagos, Africa's leading TEDx conference that promotes ideas from the continent. She is also a Skulls World Forum Fellow. And she's also the 2021 class of the most influential people of Africa descent under 40 global 100 list. Without further ado, Mercy, welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much for making our time Thank to be you. here today. And your, your, your resume, your profile is impressive. <laughs> Thank you. And your profile is amazing to meet you, first of all. So first of all, let's just dive into the questions. Um, what positive changes would you say the younger generation are bringing to the concept of leadership in Af Nigeria and Africa as a whole? So um, I'll say one is um, just young people share ability to be very vocal, mm -hmm. to be very vocal about issues that concern them. You know, um, there's that whole concept of like young people having a very strong identity. Um, I think it would be wrong for me to say young people without saying the older generation, mm -hmm. because it's extremely important to always understand that when it comes to like the only reason the young people are here is because they were able to stand on the shoulders of the older generation so in terms of concept i would say just the fact that share you know they've been very confident very vocal about you know the issues that actually concern them without feeling any slight of um um I would say being afraid. Mm. Um, so that issue-based conversation is what is one part mm. that they're really, really championing. Mm. And you're seeing them putting their money or their time and their energy into, you know, talking about these things. So, you know, just the, the changes can actually occur. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, you said um, they, are voc they are being vocal. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that vocal, this thing can also be misread as, you know, rudeness by the older generation. But that's something we'll talk about later. Um, what is your take on the lazy Nigerian youth narrative and how do we scrap this harmful, because I think it's harmful, this harmful ideology so that we can help more youth become more invested in the rebuilding and rebranding of Nigeria and Africa as a whole? So the concept of the, the narrative of the lazy Nigeria um, thing, I, I think it's extremely harmful, like yeah. you said. Um, and it's not true. <laughs> it's not true because we have a lot of young people who are very, very strong, who are very, who are not lazy, who are very busy. You're seeing more a lot of young people um, wanting to do remarkable things. They are championing different courses from climate to like fashion to beauty. They are extremely, I think right now we have a lot more young people who are a lot more active um, because, you know, you know, times have changed. Mm -hmm. You get so. In terms of scrapping the narrative, it's actually it's also very important that we spotlight the young people doing mm. amazing things, and which also ties back to a lot of the things that we're doing. Mm. Like we're having um, this particular teenager called Megan. Okay. When she was a teen, she actually built an aircraft from scratch. Wow. She's based in South Africa. She oh. got a, I think it's sort of like eighteen teenagers together to build an aircraft that flew from Cape Town to Cairo and back. Those are things that like, were unheard of like, many years ago. So I think it's extremely important for us to spotlight this narrative of young people doing amazing stuff because what, what you then see is that there's actually going to be like a ripple effect. Because the moment you spotlight the people who are, who are not lazy, who are actually doing the work, mm -hmm. you then inspire the next people to actually step up and say, hey, you know, see, you know, Chizapa was able to do this. So mm -hmm. I, I, I should also be able to do this. So yes, yes, yes. I think 
championing the narrative, championing the as spotlighting these people who are doing the work mm. is extremely important. Extremely important. Thirteen years old, an aircraft. Eighteen, yeah, eighteen. Eighteen, yeah, aircraft. And, and that's just what. It was functional. It was functional. Wow. It's all online. It's wow. functional. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so to this table of new African leadership, what would you say that the younger demographic brings to it? And what would you say the African demo and the older gen um, demographic brings to it as well, this table? What are we to bring to it? And okay. What are they bringing? I think this is a fantastic time to talk about the power of collaboration. Mm. I was speaking to someone recently and the person said that all this climate and all these issues that are coming up mm. is extremely bad to make this issue look like it's being championed by the young generation mm. because i don't know they don't they have the energy they have mm -hmm. the time they have the mind but the other generation have the resource yes. they have the experience yeah. so it's extremely important that yeah. that collaboration is actually being brought together mm -hmm. on the table so i'll say to the table the younger generation obviously brings brings the time the energy the um creativity you know mm -hmm. they're young they have like mm -hmm. new thoughts mm -hmm. and new ideas mm -hmm. but the older generation actually brings the experience they bring the resource and so I feel like that combination together would actually help um, leapfrog quite a lot of um, mm. concerns that are currently happening, not, not just in Nigeria, but also in South Africa and, and even globally in the yes. diaspora. Yes, so one thing I want to even chip in with to what you said is um, when, converse, when there's a platform where there's going to be a conversation, a merging of, merging of generations, younger and the older, um, what have you, there's always some kind of schism. You know, and it's, it feels like as if the, the younger generation just lock, they just lock down. They're like, please, just, I mean, what we're going to say is not going to be appreciated. You know, so what have you found? What tool, like one tool have you found that you use? Because you deal with teens in African teen city, and you have these kinds of, you know, merging of, you know, conversations. So what tool have you used to make the conversation a bit more fluid? So I will not say it. I will not say tool. For us, it's more of like the shared idea of respect. Mm -hmm. Um, because we've observed that it's not like the young people are being rude or they are being somehow. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have that energy. They have that, like, feel like they can do everything mm -hmm. and they know everything mm -hmm. and, and, and they know more. Mm -hmm. But, like, when they come to the table with, like, I'm respecting your opinion, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm respecting what you're bringing to the table, mm -hmm. and the older generation comes and says, okay, fine, I respect the fact that you just came, mm -hmm. so you have a fresh perspective, mm -hmm. but I'm coming with something that you don't mm -hmm. know. So that understanding, that respect... Mm -hmm. It's usually a layer that makes every other thing mm. come up faster. Mm -hmm. Like when there's that share respect, like everybody feels like we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. We want to, we want to solve this problem. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. So that's why I would say that I would not say it's a tool, but more like a foundational element before conversations actually start. Okay. So you know we talked about collaboration, but then also there's just talk about passing on the baton. Mm. You know the older generation feel like as if the younger ones have to earn this information that they have this experience that they have you know so um how would you say what would you say to the older generation so like for example the NSAS movement um there was a lot of there were a lot of people on the fence older people on the fence about how it went younger people felt you know this is how it's supposed to go so using that as an example how would you say what would, what, what would you say we needed to make the a, for there to have been a perfect merging of you know, or the older people saying, this is okay, and the younger people saying, okay, this is okay. Okay, so I'll respond to this question majorly from a, a, a slightly different perspective. Cool. Um, it's understandable why the older generation would feel like, you know, you should end this. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's understandable why the younger generation would be like, you should give me what I want. I mean, you know, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it takes me straight back to the act of respect. Mm -hmm. And that share understanding that we want to solve the same problem. Mm -hmm. We don't want these things to happen for, like, we, we want it to stop. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want to have a better future. We want mm -hmm. to have a better economy. We mm -hmm. want to have people, you know, do the right thing. Mm -hmm. We want to have mm -hmm. no corruption. Mm -hmm. We want to have... So I think at the end of the day, mm -hmm. to blend the two parties together, to blend the two, demo um, to blend the two generations together, we need to actually always still layer back on that respect. And I know I'm bringing back that respect yeah, back, but at the end of the day, yeah. like, that's one of the most important things. Because yeah. if you respect me, and I know that you respect me, and I also yeah. respect you, you can kind of, like, do anything for me. Because yeah. you feel like mercy got me, mm -hmm. mercy understands me, mm -hmm. mercy respects me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it will be vice versa. Yeah, so, yeah, it brings me back to a quote or a saying that, in communications, where they say for effective communication, the person you're trying to communicate to has to feel like you're hearing them before mm, they listen mm, to you. Mm, yeah. True, true. So um, true. you do a lot of fantastic work with 
young you know young africans home and abroad you know not african countries and everything and so obviously you've heard a lot from their hearts that they won't tell to someone else you know so what is based off of what you know they've complained to you about Afri leadership in africa and the leadership such in africa is taking such an amazing turn mm -hmm. you know a lot of people are fighting for what we should be fighting for and fighting the way we should be fighting but what have you heard what what, what would you say to them based off of what they've told you you know, t what's the charge you will give? Because a lot of them, some of them I want to quit. Some of them I want to give up and say, you know what, let me, let me just go to another country where it's working. But we need them here. So what's your charge to them? I just, uh, before I answer that question, what's happening here, it's happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's happening all over the world. And we're seeing young people, not just in Africa, but mm -hmm. also in America, in Canada, in, like everywhere. Um, so my charge would be, don't stop now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it takes time to see the change you want. But what's happening now is that things are getting fast-tracked. Mm. It takes time. Mm. But the drops and drops and drops would end up you know, creating a, a larger change than you actually would expect. And the change is actually coming sooner than you anticipated. Mm. So please don't stop now. So yeah, so that would be my one yeah. chance. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Yeah. Tiny drops, the ocean will, will soon manifest. Yes. Thank you so much, Mercy, for an amazing Thank you. You know, time and lending your expertise you. and presence Thank you. to us today. Um, I really do believe that the future belongs to the young people. Um, I'm excited about what the young people are doing. And um, I'm especially uh, young people in the African diaspora, in the diaspora that is Af in, the, in Africa, really, mm -hmm. home and uh, in the diaspora. And we just want to say from here, we love you. We are grateful for what you're doing. As she said, keep the work up you know, keep it running. Very soon, the ocean of chain that we're expecting will manifest. I will be joining John and Helen after this short break to wrap up the show. Stay tuned.